Hey everyone, uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. I'm gonna go over something that not a lot of people talk about. Uh, you see a lot of technical analysis, they do a lot, of, a lot of charting patterns and whatnot, but they don't necessarily look at momentum. So I'm gonna talk about momentum and what to look for and why it's important. So we'll jump in here and talk about momentum. So this was called momentum, and I and and to think of things, velocity is momentum. So think of a coin flip. You flip a coin right off your finger. So you have max velocity right off your finger flip, right right off the finger. It'll eventually, you know, gravity will act on it and act on it, and eventually it'll hit zero velocity at the top. And then eventually it'll gain velocity as it come back come back down to your hand where you catch it. So you have max velocity at the finger flip, max velocity at the catch, with zero velocity at the top. Think of that as buyers and sellers and the, the differences of them. When price initially is low, you'll see a bunch of buyers come in and you get this big velocity change, big movements or momentum, big candlesticks. And at the top, what happens is there's gonna be more and more sellers as you go up and eventually that velocity will contract and almost and contract to zero. And then eventually the sellers will come in and sell. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for velocity changes. Stocks trade the, the same way and momentum changes can indicate reversals at tops and bottoms. And that's why you see all these chart patterns that are wedges. It's buyers are starting to equal the sellers over time. And that's why you have all these wedge patterns and all this stuff. And also you need to recognize that there's, there's also a bunch, not just of slowing of momentum, but there's also reversal patterns. Wicks on the bottom, bullish bearish engulfings, bullish beer, uh, bearish piercings. Those are reversal patterns. So I, I call this slide, how stocks dance. So stocks move like a car does on the road. Buyers and sellers fight against each other and sometimes the stock acts more like tectonic plates rubbing against each other and slipping. Sometimes they give one direction and move quickly in the other direction, kind of like an earthquake. So, you know, typically a stock with a lot of momentum needs to first slow down before it can turn around. And we usually see reversal days. And what I mean by stocks move like a car does on a road, you're gonna see signals you know, a, a car is going very fast and it's gonna make a right-hand turn. There's a lot of things that we can use as signals to see if the car is going to actually make the turn. The car dips, you know, it applies the brakes, you can see it slowing, you can see the car nose dive. You can maybe even see the front brakes heat up if it's going fast enough. Eventually, maybe they put a blinker on, maybe the, the car, you can see it initially start to turn. There's a whole bunch of indications that a car is about to turn. Stocks are very much the same way. And I'm gonna go over an example here. This is UUUU. So we've got this downtrend here, this trend line. It breaks the downtrend. That's, that's a different, that, that's a, a signal to say, hey, look, a downtrend's being broken. Now it may be going into an uptrend. It might be changing. Uh, maybe a 50 day is crossing a 200 day. There's another indication that something's changed right here. What about the volume? The volume indicates things. The volume saying, holy crap, we got a bunch of buyers stepping, stepping in here and buying. Now, what about the, the candlestick size? Notice you've got two big candlesticks here and then the small little pullback day is here. More indications that this is gonna continue to go higher. That's a continuation pattern. Now, if you recognize some of this stuff, over time, it just all kind of falls into place. And you can see, you see big up days and smaller down days. So this is a small, this is a reversal pattern. These reversal patterns at the top, these little wicks. So you see this reversal and it comes down for a day or two. Big move higher with big candlesticks. Reversal, big down day. Then it comes back. There's a lot of momentum behind this stock right now. There's, there's a whole bunch of buyers piling in to you, 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 you. So would I be a buyer right now? I don't know because I'm a buyer down here on the break. I'm a buyer when I start seeing changes in the chart patterns. I probably maybe even would have been cost averaging in even on this downtrend because 
the valuation is so stinking cheap. But yes, the valuation is still cheap here. We do have a lot of momentum going higher. I mean, these big candlesticks are coming in and the volume is stepping in and buying this massively. So I, I can't tell you if I'd be a buyer on you, 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 it, it's up to you. I can't give that type of advice. I'm just telling you what I would, you know, what I would do. So SM Energy, here's, here's other things. And this was one of the stocks that I chose to basically do an, an individual video on it to show people what I look for as financial education. So what I look for is I look for volume increases. There's big volume increases all through here. You see the big candlesticks higher and the small down days. The big candlestick, one here, one here, one here, one here. And the down days are very much smaller. And then it leaked out because there was still sellers in this. And the oil price also was, was declining. I looked at the oil price, said, yep, it's good to go. We've got wick on the bottom here. We've got volume stepping in. We've got nice big up day here and a contraction within it. That is a signal to me that it's game on like Donkey Kong. Right here, this pattern, the big up day with the small down days in it. It popped out and it was surprising that it actually went down here. I thought it was gonna continue to go higher, but it went down and sometimes they push this down to fake people out. And I said, ah, down here, there's still a lot of buyers. Let's see if they're still there. Down day, big move higher with a bullish engulfing. I'm like, ooh, this is game on. Boom, there's your move higher. Big candlestick up days, small pullback. Big up day, small pullback. Big up day, small pullback. So what I'm looking for is at the velocity, at the momentum. The momentum showed itself back here with the big candlesticks. And the decline had no punch to it. It had no velocity. It had no momentum behind it. It's just little sellers leaking out and the buyers are waiting patiently down here. The big move higher is the momentum and velocity change right there and then the slow leak out. It's like, man, they are done. The buyers are gonna win here. And that's why I bought down here. That's the, the, the cost averaging in down here. And then the buyer stepped in and you had the big move higher with the small little sellers taking little profits on the way. The buyers are in control here. So it's important to see this stuff. So look, also look for dead periods. What this is called is a dead period right here where the buyers just equal the sellers and it's right at the base of this, this candlestick here. That's a dead period. That's a perfect time to just cost average in. So look for dead periods. Look for areas where buyers equal the sellers. Look for buyer support. You can see it in the charts down here. There's a bunch of buyers down here because look at how the stock just, it got, tired of selling, we get we see this momentum change and then it just kind of flatlines. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you just load up right here. You're like, hey, you gotta buy in. There's a bunch of buyers down here and it popped down like that somebody was trying to get people to sell so they could accumulate. You can see the volume ramp up too and boom, it's gone, higher. So that's what we're looking for. Look for volume, look at the momentum and velocity. Look for everything you can on chart for on, on the chart for clues. Just like that car about to turn, it's the same thing. So Apple, this is in the opposite direction. This is what I'm seeing in some of the tech companies. Now, if you look, you see a volume step up here. This is a kind of a big volume area. Now look at this, big down days. See these big down days everywhere? And then the fight of the sellers to try to push it back up. Big, big down days again. See them all sprinkled with the small up days? This is changing. Big down day, big down day, big down day with no really big up days anymore. This stock is getting tired. See how the sellers up here? This stock doesn't want to move higher than 125. There's a bunch of sellers up here. I think it's possible that Apple's going to decline. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the big down days, the momentum, the velocity. It's changing. Now, we are working with statistics here. We're working with probabilities. We're not working with for sure outcomes. More signals stacked on top of each other means higher probability. Look for confluence. Look at support levels. Look at resistance levels. Repeated buyers or sellers at certain prices. How does the stock compare to the overall sector? Is it relatively strong? Is there strength there? 
Are commodity prices going lower, but the stock is held up? Look for all of the clues. Now, in Apple, I would look at a bunch of other tech companies to see if they exhibit this same type of pattern, the same momentum velocity changes. And I think some of them are, because I've looked at some of them. So look for all that stuff. And the conclusion here is technical analysis is a great tool. It allows better buying points. It allows you to see chart pattern breaks. It gives you better confidence knowing what might happen before it happens. And again, this is on statistical probabilities. Stocks are highly correlated to physics and math in the real world. Look for all the signs. And it's obviously gonna take time to learn all this. It's not gonna be something that you just click your fingers and you already have it. It doesn't work like that. It takes time, it takes repeated looking at charts to get very good at these things. So look for patterns that aren't moving. That's where I accumulate. It's the dead spots. It's, it's where it flatlines, where the buyers equal the sellers. It's like everyone's lining up on a Black Friday in front of Target to all rush in and buy whatever the heck they're gonna buy. It's the same thing with stocks. The buyers on the sidelines, they wanna see movement. Once that movement comes, boom, it explodes higher. So, and also keep in mind, when you have downtrend breaks, if these are very large downtrend breaks, sometimes they pop up and then they back test the pattern. The back test is where I buy. That is where I'm cost averaging in. And then all of a sudden it just blows higher. All these uranium stocks that you guys are experiencing right now with all the momentum to the upside, when you go back and if you were to look at my market updates, I'm telling everyone, these are gonna go higher, they're gonna go higher, they broke their down, downturn pattern, I would be cost averaging in, because that's what I was doing, I was cost averaging in when no one else was really paying attention. They weren't chasing the prices. The, the breaks is like, basically you, you're in a card game and they flip it and show you what they own or what they have. It's like, hey, I've got two fours, I've got, I've got a you know, pocket fours. And it's like, oh, I know what he has. I've got pocket sevens, I'm gonna win this. <laughs> it's like they show you when you break the chart pattern. It's like, hey, we're buyers, we're gonna go buy all this stuff. And you're like, well, I'm gonna buy too. I'll buy it before everyone else gets in. So that, that's kind of how you, act, you gotta act. You gotta use all the clues that the markets are giving you. You gotta see where those support lines are. You gotta look at the chart and see where the buyers and sellers and kind of how they're interacting with each other. This is just a tug of war, that's all it is. That's all it is. So if you appreciate this, this, this comments or this content and video, click the th you know, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, uh, and, and thank you guys for listening. This is Finding Value.